welcome to another episode of Fully Charged News. Now, uh, the beauty of this is that I could actually be saying anything under this mask. I could be swearing, I could be using the most vile, inappropriate, politically incorrect language, and you wouldn't know. I can then record a voiceover, and, and that would be what you were listening to. But don't worry, I'm not going to do that. I just want to say something about this particular mask, as it is rather cool. So a while back, I recorded a podcast with a man called Neil Ricketts from a company called Vasarian, a company that is busy making various things using graphene. Now, they are obviously focused on batteries, but, but of course graphene can be used in all sorts of things, but in, in structural reinforcement, energy storage. Uh, it is a carbon material that is one atom thick, and it does make rather impressive air filters. So this is a graphene face mask. It's washable, and I have to say it is very, very comfortable. So I will post a link in the description underneath this video of where you can get these graphene masks from. Anyway, there's a lot of news coming up about electric vans and trucks. Now, this story is fairly typical, and we'll be doing a lot more with this company soon. Volta trucks, made in the UK, and unlike the amazing arrival delivery vans we saw recently, these are big heavy, proper trucks. The Volta Zero is a 16-tonne truck with battery sizes ranging from 160 to 200 kilowatt hours, giving a range of between 95 and 125 miles. And of course, some might say, but trucks drive hundreds of miles a day. I see them every day on the motorways slash freeways. Yes, of course, some trucks do drive literally hundreds and hundreds of miles a day, but loads of them don't. Loads of them are doing deliveries from a, a distribution centre just outside of town and all around the town. They're doing 90 to 120 miles a day. The, the companies that run trucks know that. So these are perfectly serviceable. And while I'm on the topic, I just think it's important to mention because this is the, the, the technological development is quite staggering. So companies like Tesla, obviously we've heard of, Nikola, we've heard of, Mercedes-Benz, we've heard of. All these uh, companies are developing huge articulated or big rig trucks that uh, or semis that uh, have between one and two megawatt hour batteries giving them many many hundreds of miles of electric range and of course all these trucks with bigger batteries also have a secondary role when they're not being used when they're being charged at night to act as a, a, a grid, grid buffer to act as grid storage and balancing technology because basically, whatever it is, an electric vehicle is a computer and battery on wheels. Just some of the wheels might be quite big. Anyway, looking forward to finding out a lot more about Volta trucks coming soon on Fully Charged. Now, it's not been much fun in certain parts of California recently. Uh, forest fires or bushfires all over the place. A lot of choking smoke. And of course, the highest temperatures ever recorded since Western settlers arrived there a few hundred years ago. Meanwhile, though, uh, something that hasn't really reached mainstream news. Meanwhile, in San Diego, the world's biggest ever battery has just been switched on. It's the Gateway Battery by LS Power, and it is 230 megawatt hours of storage capacity. But it's not even finished. By the end of next month, it will reach a 250 megawatt hour capacity. It's amazing to see how quickly these battery systems are developing. Now, California is clearly going battery bonkers. There is another facility at a place called Moss Landing that's just received uh, all its permits, all the building permits it needs to expand an existing facility to, wait for it, 6,000 megawatt hours. That is six gigawatt hours. That is previously unimaginably vast. Seriously, in a few years time, we'll be mentioning the first 10 gigawatt hour uh, battery facility somewhere on the grid. And then after that, it'll be the world's first petawatt hour battery. Now, the economics of uh, these installations is not that hard to understand. I mean, it's very important to point out that California has an enormous resource of renewable energy, wind and solar. Now, the wholesale price of electricity produced by these renewables is always much, much lower than anything that can be produced by burning fossil fuels or by nuclear power. It just is an economic reality. It's the cheapest way of producing electricity. So if you can buy that electricity when it's very, very cheap or zero or even a negative price, store it in a battery, sell it when that, expensive, that uh, electricity is very expensive, you're going to make a lot of money. That is why these batteries are being developed. That's why they're being installed. That's why millions and millions of dollars are going into installing them. It's because you can make money from it. It's not that hard to understand. 
buy it cheap, sell it expensive, ka -ching. boom, result. And briefly, while we're on the subject of batteries, I love this. Uh, scientists and researchers at the University of Washington in St. Louis, USA. I'm confused because I think of either Washington, D.C., Washington State. St. Louis is in Missouri. Uh, but anyway, the university is called Washington, University of Washington in St. Louis. Uh, they've developed a special polymer uh, which they soak bricks in. Red bricks, ordinary run-of-the-mill clay red bricks, you know, like you build a house with. They soak it in this special polymer. What happens to this brick? It becomes a battery. Join thousands of them together. It's in a thing called a building. <laughs> you join all these batteries together in a building, and what have you got? A massive energy storage system that's also called a building. Now, this stuff is still being developed. It's still experimental, but it has proved to be plausible. It is quite extraordinary. Energy bricks. Now, to continue our look at uh, electric vehicles coming out of unusual places, places you don't connect with car manufacturing necessarily, this is the Isera, hope I'm pronouncing that right, 100% electric car from Poland. Now, I have previously and ignorantly sometimes described Poland as, the, as producing the dirtiest electricity in Europe because they do, they do love coal in Poland. They love it. They love digging it up and they love burning it. I mean, there's no denying that. Sorry if you're Polish. It's just true. And you used to flog a load of your coal to us. We used to buy your coal. We stopped now because we don't burn coal very much here. But there's an enormous investment in renewable energy in Poland. I've just been finding out about it, which is really, really encouraging. So I'm impressed with that. And the iZera is made by a company called Electromobility Poland. And it's a state-controlled joint venture established in 2016 by four Polish power companies. This is really interesting. It's the electricity companies that have been investing in this car company. Now, the company haven't revealed any specs on this car just yet, other than saying it has a 400-kilometer, 250-mile range. It sounds like it's built on the Volkswagen. Volkswagen MEB platform, which is the battery drivetrain and all that stuff, or it could be on the PSA EVMP platform. We don't know, but clearly they're going to be buying in lots of components to build the car. It's quite a nice looking car. Wouldn't it be cool to be able to review a Polish car? It's planned to go on sale in 2022, so don't hold your breath just at the moment, but Polish cars are on the way. Now, if you want to buy an electric car, or if you're talking about buying an electric car, you're probably going to meet someone who goes, well, what about where the, the materials, where the batteries come from? That makes them dirtier than diesel. And the energy that goes into them is just made from burning coal. I wonder who that sounds like about 10 years ago. He's changed his mind now. Anyway, um, uh, what you should possibly say to them now, instead of worrying about where the batteries come from, because that technology is developing so fast you can't say anything definitive about batteries because in two years time it will be totally different here's a problem where does the steel come from the cars that they like driving the clean diesel ones or the self-charging hybrids they still are made of steel they have steel in them even if you've got a completely carbon fiber body there are a lot of steel components cars need steel the steering assembly the brake discs loads of stuff is made of steel how do you make steel you you can't make steel without burning fossil fuels. You need coal and coke and gas. We, I'm going to go on a demonstration. I'm going to get a placard and go on a demonstration and say, ban steel now. No more steel. Steel is killing us. Death to steel. So you cannot make steel without burning fossil fuels. Until today. Just recently, the world's first fossil-free steel plant has opened. What the what? Hybrid. Which, I love this, which is hydrogen breakthrough iron making technology, hybrid. Now, this is a groundbreaking effort to reduce CO2 emissions in the steel industry. They're going to replace the coal with hydrogen and renewable electricity to make steel. So what do you have to do to make, make steel? You need huge lumps of really, really hot heat, big, solid blocks of massive heat. And that has got to melt rock. That is iron ore. Right, you had to melt the rock and turn it into a liquid metal. Oh my God, it's so hot. And the only way we've done that for hundreds of years is by burning coal and coke. So now we can burn hydrogen and we can produce the hydrogen. Okay, there might be some energy losses, but in this circumstance, this sounds like a really, really good excuse for using wind and hydro and solar to produce hydrogen to melt rocks into steel. So now it is possible to make steel 
without burning fossil fuels. I think this is a brilliant project. I can't wait to hear more about how it's operating. It's literally just starting. Nice. And now a few quick stories. Uh, all the links to all these stories are in the uh, description beneath this video. Do check them out if you're interested in finding out more. But here's a, a few quick stories that just caught my eye in the last few days. Um, the UK government has admitted... <laughs> this is, I love this. How can you admit this? Mind you, our government does sort of change its mind every 44 seconds on average. But anyway, the UK government admitted that wind and solar are 30 to 50% cheaper than they thought. Now... That makes no sense to me, even though I've read the article, because why would you think they were 30 to 50 percent more expensive than you thought? The only reason is that you've had a thought offered to you by someone else. Someone, let's just suppose it could be someone who is advocating and lobbying for the fossil fuel industry. Oh, those solar panels, they're not as cheap as people say. I think if you look into it, you'll find they're 30 to 50 percent more than, than we say or, or something. Oh, please, believe us, please, because we're desperate, because we've really got to sell a lot of coal and gas and no one wants to buy it anymore and we're panicking. It's worth reading that article anyway. It is very interesting. Basically, everyone now accepts that wind and solar are cheaper. Anyway, moving on. A few years back, we went to see some very big land-based wind farms built by General Electric. On one of those, they've now installed a 25 megawatt multiple hour duration energy storage system. A big battery. Oof, nice. That means this massive battery can deliver 25 megawatts. That is a lot of electricity for many hours from this facility Maybe when the wind isn't blowing. But what General Electric have worked out, uh, let me work it out, is that they get effectively free electricity from their wind turbines. These wind turbines have already paid for themselves. They've been going for a few years. That goes, you get free electricity in and you sell the electricity back. As I was saying earlier, that is quite a good economic proposition. Moving on to a slightly more negative story. Now this, I can't find any reports of this in English. This was a, a reported in a German magazine. And it explains how, yet again, uh, German diesel car makers, in, in this case Audi, have just been doing a little bit, a little bit of cheaty adjustment on their emissions that come out of the very, very large exhaust pipes on an Audi Q5. Quel surprise! Whoever would have thought that that could possibly happen? And basically, they put the Audi Q5 on a rolling road to test its exhaust gases. It's a standard test. It's just, that's how you test things. You put it on the rolling road, like that. It goes along, all the rollers underneath. You can test how much torque it's got, how much power it's got. And you can also test what's coming out of the exhaust pipe. It goes through loads of technological machinery. And it shows, as it was doing the test, really, really low CO2, low NOx, really, really safe. You could A baby could breathe in those gases coming out of a, the back of a massive diesel engine. Unless... You move the steering wheel, in which case the cheating device that is built into the car, that is part of the decision-making process that went into constructing that vehicle and then selling it using those figures. <laughs> Anyway, finally, some right, this, I'm going to end on some, some really uplifting good news for our great, 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 probably five, great, great, no, six, no, eight, great, 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 great grandchildren. They're going to absolutely look back historically and go, oh, weren't they good? Weren't they wonderful then? Because we've started to clear up the land on which one of our early nuclear power stations was built in the UK. Uh, a Dune Ray in Scotland. I've seen it when I was a kid. It's, it's been knocked down now, but the land is still there. And this land will be safe, absolutely safe, to use for other purposes. You could farm on it, you could grow carrots there, you could build houses there. It'd be safe in 2333. Anyway, that's all, folks. <laughs> I just want to thank a few of our lovely patrons. These people are absolutely critical for the survival 
of uh, Fully Charged. That is why we're able to continue to make these shows. I'm hugely grateful to the enormous long-term, that's what astonishes me, long-term generosity of our Patreon supporters. So here's uh, uh, names of a few people who support us on Patreon for $10 a month or more. Absolutely staggering. So big thank you to Joe Nye, Casper Hjorth, Nick Clare, Neville Brownlee, David Lewis, John Heaton, Ian Pennick, Marsan Burkon, Derek O'Neill, Sam Costa, Chris, Paul Target, Jeff Evans, Callum Breesk, Sam Orr, George Barlow, Rupert Wilson, Arlene Allen, Richard Lucker, and Perry Simpkins. Thank you all so much for uh, supporting us on Patreon. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, we also do a th we are developing this thing. We still haven't quite got there, but we're getting closer uh, with fully charged YouTube membership. So you, can, you don't have to go to Patreon. You can stay on the YouTube page and you can support us with YouTube memberships. And we're going to develop more stuff for YouTube memberships. We're still, we're still struggling, basically, because we're not meeting each other and we're having to do everything on Zoom. It's the normal story. We're not special. We're the same as everyone else. Uh, I want to mention that. I also want to mention the fact, I did mention earlier on, that... Um, uh, Vasarian uh, was one of the companies that we did a podcast with. Uh, the podcasts have restarted. Um, you, if you go to fullycharged.show slash podcast, you can find all the links there. Um, we're doing a weekly podcasts, audio podcasts with amazing people we've had on there. And if you haven't uh, subscribed to it, have a look at some of the people we've had on there in the past. We're going to have lots more. We've recorded a lot more that are coming out every week. So they're released every Monday. And that's nice. Uh, other than that, please do subscribe to this channel on Fully Charged. That does help us enormously. You don't have to look at Patreon or memberships or anything. Just... The most important thing of all is that you watch the show. There's lots more coming. We're really looking forward to seeing you again soon. But for now, if you have been...